I'm Coyote Peterson. Right now we're on the Sonoran Desert searching for rattlesnakes, and I just came across something pretty creepy. When exploring in the wild, one of my favorite things about the desert is that you never know what you are going to come across. And if you dare to go out and explore into the darkness of night, Arizona's Sonoran Desert is a world of biological diversity. Oh, look at this right here, little lizard. It is a western banded gecko. Oh, look at him, he's seen us now. He flicked his tail up in the air. He's basically saying, stay back. I am a little beast. And that he is, but this is one of the friendliest lizard species we could have come across here in the desert. And they are extremely fragile, so I'm gonna be extra gentle with him. Oh, come here, got him. This is the famous little gecko species that lives out here in the Sonoran Desert. And unfortunately for this little guy, if he's not careful, he's gonna stumble upon what we're really looking for, rattlesnakes and scorpions. You were just too cute to be eaten by either of those two. We're gonna let him back off into the desert. You stay safe, little guy. Always cool to come across a western banded gecko. See you later. Capturing a gecko is what I would call a pleasant surprise. But I think we all know that lurking in the shadows, you can also find a whole bunch of creatures that are better suited for nightmares. Some of them have close to a thousand legs. Some have only a hundred, which isn't as bad by comparison but these giants are also armed with a very painful, venomous bite. Then you have the spiders, big and hairy, or small and stealthy. That right there is a black widow. Pick your venom wisely, because sometimes it's the little guy that packs the most powerful punch. Oh yeah, then there are the three scorpion species. You know, striped-tailed, desert hairy, and bark. That's a giant desert hairy. Whoa, he's a big one too. Wow, look at that. You're probably asking, does the nightmare ever end? I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Shine around. Black light out. Oh, something moved there. Oh, jeez, look at that. Wow, okay, don't need a black light for this one. Jeez, Do you know that? what that is? No. That is a whip scorpion. Hold on, I have actually never seen one of these before out in the wild. Look at that. Does that thing not look like an alien? Wow. Now, this is not actually a scorpion, and they are not venomous, so I do not have to be afraid of handling this arachnid. Let me try to get him up on my hand here. I don't want to agitate him too much because whip scorpions are also known as vinegaroons. Come here, buddy. Oh, gotcha. Look on my hand. Yes. Is this safe what you're doing right now? It's safe enough. Look at that, as long as he doesn't shoot me with his acetic acid. And right there at the base of the abdomen, they have two glands that they can actually shoot two streams of acetic acid at any potential predator. And right now he's probably not feeling that I'm a predator because I'm not a rodent, and that's primarily what's feeding on these creepy crawlies. Wow, now let's see if he smells vinegary. Nope, he doesn't, which is a really good sign. If he was agitated, those glands would start to activate, and then I would know he's probably getting close to shooting me with his acid mixture. Now that spray, that acetic acid that they shoot out, really smells like vinegar, hence the nickname Vinegaroon. Now, this whip that you have up on the back side here, it kind of looks like a scorpion stinger, but no stinger on it. You see all those little tiny hairs? It's actually a sensory organ which helps them navigate in their environment. Now you may be wondering what this arachnid feels like. He's actually got some weight to him. He's pretty heavy for a creature of this size. And his little legs have tiny hooks on them. I can actually feel him holding onto my hand, which is why I'm able to do this. See that? Pretty much is just stuck onto my hand. Uh, this is one well-equipped predator. Let's talk about what the whip scorpion eats. You see these pedipalps up front with those pinchers? And what they're hunting for out here is crickets and roaches. So if you see one of these in your yard and you've got a roach problem, just let him hang out because he's gonna do all the exterminating for you. And what they'll do is they'll grab onto their prey and shove it into the set of chompers that they have inside there. I'm not gonna get my finger too close. I don't wanna know what that bite feels like, but I can tell just by looking in there that it is bad news. 
Now, if you're a human and you come across one of these, I can't imagine that you're gonna to wanna to pick it up like I'm doing, but if you do and you are squirted with that acetic acid, all you have to do is wash out your eyes with some water, keep flushing them out until the burning goes away, you'll be just fine. These aren't actually venomous like a scorpion or most spider species. Now, this is the first time I've ever encountered a whip scorpion, and I guarantee you it's the first time this whip scorpion has ever encountered a human. Have you ever seen a creature creepier than the whip scorpion? Tell me about it in the comment section below. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. So while it may look like a creepy alien from another planet, remember, if you ever see one around your house, it's the best kept roach extermination secret out there. And when you line it up against the other arachnids and myriapods of the night, the vinegaroon is about as friendly and harmless as it gets. If you thought that was one wild adventure, check out the time I was chomped by the soul pugit. And don't forget, subscribe to join me and the crew on this season of Breaking Trail. I'm Coyote Peterson, and I'm about to enter the strike zone with the soul pugit. Ready? One, two, three.